Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, based on the time zones you all are coming from. So before we start with the session, can you all please give me a quick information if you all can see my screen and hear me loud and clear as well? Great. Thank you for the confirmation, everyone. My name is Neeraj Kheria, and I've been working in this IT industry for more than 13 years now. So before we get started, let me quickly introduce our Educa Masterclass community with you all. So this community of masterclasses was started back in 2019. And since then, we have been closing into more than 33,000 members so far. And in these masterclasses, we conduct multiple webinars and live events on different topics, including blockchain, IoT, artificial intelligence, machine learning, big data, and multiple front-end and back-end development technologies. And the best part about these webinars are they are absolutely free of course, and they are, again, open for anyone to join to increase their knowledge on the skill set that is required for getting, getting into any industry vertical. So let's start with a discussion on Power BI. So today we have gathered for a discussion on Power BI, where we are going to discuss on what exactly Power BI is as a part of the main, one of the main tools offered for data visualization part. And then we are going to discuss on how exactly it is structured in helping us to visualize data. And then we are going, if time allows, then we are going to see a small hands-on as well. So Power BI, as you know, again, it is one of the most popular BI tools, BI as in business intelligence tool. When you say BI, again, when you say BI, it simply means that we are using the platform for getting insight from the given set of data set. So basically, if we have any data, again, if you don't make sense out of the data, then that data is going to be useless for us. And to make sense, to make sure that we do get the best possible insight so that we can allow the stakeholders to take meaningful, and again, we can say good actions, then we can use this concept of BI for, the, for any data set. And again, these are one of the most popular platforms, just like we have Tableau, we have Power BI, and they allow us to get the best return on the investment for even when we have procured data from any different sources. And in terms of Tableau, again, Tableau is more con is more towards the, we can say advanced visualization strategies is offered by Tableau, whereas Power BI has a good, we can say automated solution offered by, offered for, uh, gets for different data set. For example, here we have Quick Insight, and that is offered only by Power BI itself. As com uh, we can say, the automated analysis is done by Power BI as compared to Tableau, and Tableau can be customized in a much better way as compared to Power BI. So, in terms of the, we can say, the customization part here, again, Tableau can be a better or a better choice, whereas Power BI can be used for a completely automated solution that we can make use of. So why Power BI? So Power BI again has the machine learning integrated. It also is offered for different devices, not just for desktop. And again, it offers the advanced analytics, including the automated analysis that we can perform. And then here we have the Cortana integration available. Although it is optional, we, if you want, we can integrate that. And we, have, and we also have multiple APIs available for integration with other platforms as well. And then we have the in, on for the customization part here, we can use it for customizing any specific tools that we have. Now we have discussed on the no, again, there are different use there are different even components of Power BI itself, as you already are aware on that part. So without ado, suppose again in terms of the building blocks, you already are aware of this fact here. So without ado, you can go ahead and navigate to the Power BI platform itself. So Power BI is offered as a desktop application, which is applicable only for Windows. But again, in case you don't have the access to Windows, still we can use Power BI service. So using Power BI service, we can access Power BI, we can say complete functionality by using the cloud-based dashboard being offered here. So, but again, if we want to download Power BI locally, then we can do that by using this link here for Power BI desktop. So Power BI can be offered for both, uh, can be used from Windows desktop, but again, the local version cannot be down, cannot be installed on Mac systems. It is offered only for Windows-based platform. And again, it's like a community tool available. There is no licensing involved here. If you're using Windows, we can go ahead and download this software locally. 
And once we, again, if you want to make use of Power BI service as a part of the online platform, then here we can also look for this link where we have Power BI service, where we can simply sign into Power BI service, and then we will be able to have the access to the platform. So here we can make use of Power BI service. If we don't have the access to a Windows system, then we can make use of this link. And once we, once we log in, then this is going to be the screen for Power BI. Although Power BI Desktop has a slightly different version and then what we have in Power BI service, but the actual application is more or less the same. So if you want to get started with Power BI, we have to click on this link here, which says create. And then under create, we can choose the data set. If you want to use the, now in terms of the, we can say if you want to work on multiple data sets, so here we can click on data sets. If you want to add, here we can see, data set for the reports that has already been published to power bi dashboard we can simply see that if you want to work on our own then we can simply include the other components as well just a moment so if you want we can include our own data set in the format of excel sheet or even in some other formats and if you want to include our we can say if you want to upload our excel file here if you want to integrate with this with any other we can say dashboards then we can also do that so let's see how we can upload our not in power bi service we cannot upload the excel file directly but we can copy and paste the data that we have the access to so let's do that let's copy and paste so for that we can click on create here we can paste or manually enter the data set so we already have the access to one global superstore that we are going to make use of so using power bi desktop again there is no requirement for any work email but in case you want to publish that report then you have to have the account you need to have the account all right all right so now once we are now once we have logged in so here we can manually paste the data set so we already have the access to one global superstore data set where we have data for almost for our dummy store where we have data for their shipment for their products for different categories and so on and that is what we are going to make use of so this is the data that we have the access to so as you can see here we have the access to these data set as we can see here here we have order id order date shipment date shipment mode customer id then we have for segment city state country postal code market region then we have the access to the category subcategory product name so these are again different data sets available now if you want to make use of it we can select all and we can go ahead and paste this in our data set here so again this is this entire data set is simply going to be inserted here all right so here as you can see if you want to make use of the first one has the row as well so again we can simply go ahead and define this so here we have the shipment mode customer id defined now if you want to make use of it as a part of our global super store or suppose we name the table name as suppose orders only orders and here we can click on order create report if you want to generate the report out of it automatically or we want to create a blank report and we want to generate the reports manually then we can click on create a blank report so using a blank report only the data pointers are going to be imported and then we can start working on the report generation one by one now this is the now once we import the entire data set here so again we will be able to get this kind of blank report available and now here we have the screens available here and if you want to customize this we can simply go and customize report as and when required so this is going to be the home screen where in the left sidebar we are looking at all the common entities for power bi in the central screen we can see the actual report builder that, that means this is going to be the canvas where we can import our multiple data pointers and here we have all the filters that we can apply and towards the right corner we can see the table which contains all the data pointers that we have currently imported so we had defined the table name as orders and again we can see different pointers being listed here in terms of category city country and discount and market sets all right if you want to start generating reports here so we can pick any data pointers here for example let's say here we want to visualize the performance in terms of profit and we want to plot this against in, uh, against the order date now the, the main problem statement for the company is we the company needs to analyze the performance in terms of profit it has generated for last for the last four years for example here we can see currently the data is for last four years only 
So as you can see here, currently we have data set for the profit distribution for last four years for 2012, 13, and then we have 14, and then we have for 11. So these are default data pointers. Now we can see here we have now based on this graph, we, now here we have different type of visualizations that we can go for. For the data that we are going to choose here, we can go for the SAT column charts or stack row charts here. We can go for the bar graph. We can go, now if you want to convert this to a, a simple graph chart here, a line graph. So we can click on the line graph and we can see here we have the graphical representation of the same data that we have currently worked on. All right. Now, now here, we have now in case you don't want to use it so here we can simply go ahead and delete that now here based on this graph we can see everything is working fine correct if you notice this that we based on this graph everything seems to be working fine no issues are there correct but if we if the company wants to dive deeper the company needs to understand how the profit has been distributed among different yeah, we can say among the uh, given time span, how the profit has been distributed among, uh, we can say in 2012, 2013, 14, we, the company needs to have a better insight on that. So for getting that insight, we have to go ahead and bifurcate the current data pointers. For example, here we have order date, right? So currently we are looking at the order date and in this data set, we have the data for year, quarter, month and day. Now we want now here we don't want to include the year as a data set. We can simply go ahead and close here. So now we can see data has been distributed. The graph is now being plotted for the quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four here. Now, if you want to do if you don't want to focus this on a quarter basis, now we can segregate this based on the month basis. Now the picture is completely different, right? Now we are seeing a different picture altogether. So we can see now the prof, how the profit has been distributed over the year. So we can see till now we see a, a strong spike from April to May, as you can see in the May. But again, we saw a strong, we can see a strong, we can see downfall from June one till July. So again, this may be like a, the off season for the company. And again, we see a steep increase in profits from the, from August onwards. And again, this keeps almost this is maintained by the end of the year as well. So again, this is again a hidden insight that we have derived from the from this particular graph, right? Again, if you want to create separate graphs, for example, if you want to have separate graphs for different year. So basically here we can apply the, now what we can do is, if you want to create separate graphs for different year, now currently we are seeing us, we can say one graph for one year, for example, now we can define this graph. Let's say we can, filter okay we want this graph to be defined only for suppose this one if you want to apply filters and here we can see here we have filters for order date if you want to apply the filter okay for this particular here we want to have the data set where we have to where we can define it should be in a given year or if we can say here we want to add data pointers for month for year so you can simply drag and drop here and then we can add the year as a filter we can here suppose add a, as a filter now we can drop in as a part of year here now we want to showcase this for one specific year only for example here we want to show this only for 2015 we can do that so same way we can create different graphs for example we can create another copy we can create another copy we can create another copy so now this one can be for now this is for 2015 this one here we can again segregate this as a filter Suppose here we want to apply this for now. Basically, here we want to change the filtering here. So here we can choose it for 2012, not for 15. We can set this for 14, and this one can be set for 13. So basically, we can plot different graphs for, for all the performance of different years. We can do that, or we can combine all the graphs into a single graph as well as a part of legend. So what we can do, if the company wants to have a, just a single graph where it can visualize the performance or performance in terms of profit for each and every year. So we can create a single graph. So what we can do is we can create a new page. So we can create as many pages as you want by choosing the pagination option available at the bottom. We can do that. And here, for example, suppose here we want to add data set. For example, here, again, we can choose profit. We can choose the profit at here and suppose here we want to 
bifurcate this in terms of the graph. So here we get again choose a line graph. Now here we don't want to include year as a data pointer. We don't want to include month, but now we want to visualize year as a part of legend. So here we can simply draw, drag and drop year into the legend field. Now we can see we have a single graph and now we have multiple years being plotted as different, but we can say different year pointers. And again, they all have been automatically segregated by using different color scheme, whatever color scheme we are using for the project. We can simply segregate that. And now suppose say once we are done working on this one, so we can simply go ahead and save the entire report as well. We can go ahead and save it. If you want to publish this onto web or we want to export this to PDF as well, we can also do that. We can apply the filters that can be applicable for all the reports. Now, basically, but now this is a default feature offered by Power BI. So whenever we are going to create an interactive dashboard, so whatever data pointers we are going to choose, the other reports are going to respond accordingly. For example, suppose currently we are looking for consumer segment, right? Now here we have profit by month and year. So whenever we are going to choose consumer, so obviously the the profit by month and year is going to be focused on the consumer segment only. That means right now we are looking at the graph only for the consumer segment in terms of profit by month and year. Same way for profit by shipping board, we are looking at data pointers only for consumer segment. We are looking for profit only for the only for we can say only based on the consumers or based on the Again, the category that we have chosen here based on the category that we have chosen. So again, this is what we are. This is what we can perform in terms of in terms of the values being defined here. So we can choose any kind of visual here. And again, suppose here we want to add buttons. We also have the powerful Q&A engine also offered by Power BI as well that we are going to look at how exactly we can customize this entire Q&A engine to allow the allow anyone to have a quick insight on the current data set for example suppose here we want to ask uh, here if someone asks again okay, suppose profit by different segments in a map in a map so as you can see here we have we are simply asked a question here we are simply asked a question here and then here we can see the map has automatically been generated right so again, whatever questions any consumer is going to be asked, again, this is going to be delivered by the Q&A session itself that we can also embed. Once we are done generating the, once we are done working on this report here, we can go ahead and export. And again, we will be able to get the support and plus we will be able to generate a QR report. We can even embed this to any platform, to any other platform we want, depending upon how exactly we are going to configure that. Thank you so much for joining everyone and have a great day ahead. Take care. Bye-bye.